Okay, so here's a great story. We, so it was 2000 in January, January 1st, 2017. Just prior to that, John and I were preparing for this impending split of our business where the four partners were splitting up. We, you know, our oldest brother lived up north in the capital of Virginia in Richmond, and there's two studios there, and we we're all set. We had the contract signed, and he was taking control over those, and we were taking control over the two yoga studios, hot yoga studios in uh, one in Virginia Beach and one in Norfolk and uh, what's called Hampton Roads. And we were uh, collectively, all three of us, buying out our fourth partner. All, right, all good. It was, uh, it, was, it was tough there towards the end. But uh, we got to finally got to agreement. We signed contracts. And all of a sudden, we were like, man, January 1, this is the go time for hot yoga. Like, we are ready. We got to be like, what are we going to do? Like, what are we, how are we going to market? Like, let's do something. We're gonna, let's go big, though. And so what did we do, John? We had uh, a contract with a uh, marketing company in the area. And so uh, we had to spend a little money, I think at that point with them. Uh, so we decided to put a post-it note on the front of the very first paper of the year. Uh, so, this, so this paper is the Virginian pilot. It goes through all of the seven cities of Hampton roads and the post-it note is on the top of it. We knew from their data that this January 1st newspaper is the most read newspaper of the entire year. And so they're like, listen, you know, this post-it note on the front is going to cost you $3,500, but it's going to be delivered to this number of thousand. I don't even remember what it was. It was like 50 or 60,000 60, 60, people. So 50, think about it, 50 or 60,000 people that live in this area of the seven cities where both your studios are located are going to see this post-it note first thing on January 1, the New Year's resolutionary time. They're going to be so excited. And uh, so drum roll. Zero. Zero. We had no crickets <laughs> come in that we knew of. And this is one of the problems we'll talk about um, that we knew of that came in because of that post note. We basically took uh, $3,500 and lit it on fire. Burn it. <laughs> Burn it. Burn it. <laughs> it was one of those, you know, you never fail. You always learn in there because because there's always a result, right? And so we, if as, as long as we keep that mindset, uh, we spent $3,500 for a good lesson. Uh, and this, but this, what, you know, that what this story highlights is the difference between the old way of marketing, the new way of marketing. What we're going to talk about is general marketing versus direct response marketing and how this plays into the five core functions of business, which is what we talked about last time. And we're going to break that down a little bit. So, so general marketing is what we just described, right? You throw an ad out there and you put it either on like the radio or on a news in the newspaper or uh, what's the other one? Radio, news, TV, TV, TV spot. And there is zero way of measuring it. So we don't know, like we put this ad out and we don't know the response. And what these media companies say is, oh, we know that this number of people watch at this time or view at this time or uh, they read the paper. And so we can tell you that your ad will get eyeballs on it. But I don't know what they do with it. I did know that post-it note, nobody did anything with it because we even had like, hey, if you see this and you come in, mention it and we will give you such and such discount. Yeah, bring it in. You get a discount. We even had a- We, we had, had a good a, call to action. Good call to action, right? <laughs> Click on this link that was actually on there and you can get this discount. Uh, so we had ways of tracking it and we did not get anything from it. And that's the, the, the problem with general marketing is that you're putting these messages out there without any way of measuring it. And those forms of media, they are expensive. I mean, literally like this little post-it note going on all those things, $3,500, right? We are fortunate that we've been in business for that long and we had the ability, the marketing budget to spend on it. But man, yoga studios, small mom and pop yoga studios don't have that in their budget to gamble on general marketing in the hopes that someone will come in because of it. And so what we're really talking about is lead generation. Like this is that this was the very first core function of a business, lead generation. How do you get people? How do you get eyeballs on your ad? How do you get people in your studio? How do you get people moving in your direction? Right? How? In the old way, it was exactly what Chris said. 
it's newspapers, it's rags, it's it's uh, TV. If you can get a TV spot or it's a radio spot, and then it, you're kind of praying, hoping that people see it and come in from it. And so the lead happens when someone walks through your yoga studio doors. Right then, oh, there's a lead. There's someone who's interested. And let me give you information or let me give you a tour. One of the problems is that like, if you were to do general marketing, most yoga studios close their doors and lock them. <laughs> 30 minutes beforehand, that's when they open. And, and what, guess who's behind the desk? A teacher who doesn't know how to sell and doesn't know like all the, the ins and outs of actually what compels people to buy and what they're looking for. And so, they, or, or at worst, they, they just say, yeah, come on in and give it, we'll give it to you for free. Right. And it like, so it's, it's crazy how backwards and archaic most yoga studios are operating. Now, Back to the direct response, lead generation. So when we started learning this, like we were in earnest in 2015, right? Through 2016, we joined a mastermind group. We started learning and it was really all like online marketing. And direct, it was funny. Direct response marketing. And that's what it's called in the world is direct response marketing. What that means is you, you put an ad out and someone like has an a action to take and only one action to take. So some of you may be thinking, well, I do. I put an ad out and then I, I, I give them a link to my website. No, that's not it. Because there are so many things that can distract them on that website. There's not one thing to do. There's a thousand things to do. Think uh, about your website. It has a testimonial page. It has about us. It has uh, why the heat. It has why the why yoga. It has the tradition of traditions of yoga. I mean, how many here's tabs? Here's contact us and here's how, like. Right. How many schedule? Tabs. And uh, there's literally hundreds of tabs, hundreds of ways to get lost inside. There. Think about every tab as a doorway where that people can get distracted and, and eventually click off. Right. So this is what happens with most of us is, is we put our, our ad out. We say, go to our website and we hope that they get to our website and are interested enough in all of those things that they contact us. Right. That is the recipe for them to get distracted and disappear and never contact you at all. Your website is just an online brochure. That's it. So what we mean with direct response marketing. And so when we joined these mastermind groups back in 2015, what they taught us was online marketing. And we were like, but we're a yoga studio and we're offline. But we understood enough that, man, there may be a way to marry these two things together. A brick and mortar online yoga studio with an online understanding of how to get leads, how to get new people through the doors because they are the lifeblood of your business. But this is, uh, I think, a 2016 study, but... Um, uh, it was by, I think, Yoga Alliance, and they joined with, I think, Yoga Journal. Yoga Journal, yeah. And they did this big meta-analysis, and it said that 60 or 80%, I can't remember, what was it? It was between 60 and 80% of the people that are with you now as new students will not be with you in a year. So between 60 and 80, I got to go check the numbers. I didn't check them before this. Percent of the people that are with you now as new students are not going to be with you. They're just going to fall off. They're going to be out. And so what that means is we need a process by which we can keep new people coming in and general marketing doesn't do it. It's very expensive. You can't measure it and you don't know how good you're doing. And then if you bring people into the studio, then do you have a process by which you talk to them and sell them in the studio to be able to buy the introductory package? Yeah, it's 80 percent, Chris. It's 80%. almost 80 percent. Yeah. Uh, some studios that do a good job with all of this uh, get that attrition rate down to, to closer to 60, but it's 80 percent uh, for on average for gyms and, and, uh, and yoga studios. Um, so let's define lead generation a little bit more. Let's, let's clarify that because we've been talking about uh, new, uh, new marketing versus old marketing, um, kind of what we did. Um, so specifically, if someone's listening to this and they're like, okay, what is lead generation exactly? Is it like, do I just put an ad out and then t and get them to do an action? Like what, what defines lead generation, Chris? Well, back in the day, a lead was uh, someone walked into your yoga studio. They are now a lead, meaning they have walked in. There they are. You can shake their hand. You can get their name. Hopefully, you can get their like registration form. So you have a number. You can call them and follow up with them. Um, that's the nurture aspect of it. But let's pivot now. So that's old style. New style is you actually acquire an email from them. This is in the online world. Again, we're going to bridge the gap because like some of you may be thinking, but I'm a yoga studio. How does online marketing, even like direct response marketing, how does it fit into my world? And we'll tell you how it fits into your world right now. So Chris, I can hear yoga studio owners saying like, well, I do online. I do social. Uh, I post social uh, almost every day. <laughs> it, and they, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> and they mistake this <laughs> with love, all the love in my heart, John. <laughs> and they mistake this for advertising, 
right? And this is not just obviously not just the yoga world, but in in the in brick and mortar studios everywhere. And what people think uh, of as online marketing is, oh, I'll just do a social post once a day and get people to do stuff off my social post. What's like, what are we, what are we talking about? Like online, the difference between like doing the social posts every day or once in a while and saying, okay, I've did my, my free online marketing versus, uh, actual online direct response marketing lead generation. Well, the difference is they, when, when you're online doing like the direct response marketing, you're throwing an ad out and they have one action to take and you're giving them value. Like you're giving them information that they, that they like really want and need in their lives because they find value in it because it's going to help them solve a pain point that they have a problem that they have. And then, but in exchange for that value, and you can do this in a number of different ways, but we'll just say for like the concept itself in exchange for that value, they give you your, their email address with which you can then follow up. So the lead has been generated when you now have a way of communicating with them. And so we thought we were gonna separate these in different podcasts, but it's hard not to talk about all of them. So we're gonna talk about lead generation, lead nurture, and lead conversion all in this one. Because once you've got their email address, you can then follow up with them via email. Now, if you're on Facebook and they express interest in the post that has, what it could just be a video, or it could be like, hey, here's a video and then here's a link and here's the information that you, if you want, you can have it. Just give me your email address and I'll give it to you so that you can then follow up not just via email, or but you can also follow up via Facebook. And what that leads you into, once you have a way of communicating with them, you can now nurture them. And all that means is continue to like talk to them about stuff they care about and provide value and help them like solve problems genuinely from the heart. This is where I think yoga like studios and yoga teachers can really thrive is because like we have huge hearts and we want to help people. It's like it's it's pure that the intention of what we're doing and what we're offering is like it's pure and it's good. And so when you can marry that like that intent with the power of direct response marketing, you have something very, very powerful, very potent. So if I get, uh, so if I collect an email or collect emails and then I start to nurture, meaning, uh, specifically meaning I, was, I consistently send them emails with some really great information and good value, uh, at what point do, uh, do I make an offer? At what point do I then, uh, jump to the next phase of lead conversion? Is it, uh, I send one email with something cool and then say, Hey, I got this great offer. So, well, the answer to the question is it it varies. There's uh, some statistics say that they need to see and hear from you at least seven times before they're now ready to make a commitment and actually purchase your introductory package. You'll now, hear, they're really, called touch points, guys. Yeah, but that really it it really depends on like their level of awareness with their own pain and their own problems that they have and what they believe is the solution. So people that need more nurturing, they need more touch points, more contact from you are people who don't have readily the pain apparent to them, or they just don't know that what you do is a solution for them. And so there's the education process that happens. So anywhere between probably minimally seven points and all the way up to 16, you know, I've heard, one of the last things I heard, 16 yeah. touch points. So what this is what's so interesting it says then at some point one of those emails says hey if you're interested in doing yoga with us here is an offer and click on this link to go to not your website not go your to website a page guys. that has one action and that is push this button to purchase this offer and fill in your credit card information and then you will get x offer and you'll be able to come in for this duration of time to practice whatever the offer is 30 days or you know, two weeks or whatever it is but once they've done that once they've made the purchase you've converted them so you've gone from lead generation to lead nurture you've nurtured them you've communicated you've educated them and then you've converted them this is the thing once they've converted that's when it actually starts because we have these like two tiers of leads one you, they don't know who you are and they give you information so that you can communicate with them. And then now you've nurtured them enough and you've said, hey, I can help you. And they say, okay, I'd love to be helped. And then they buy. Now it's time to fulfill on what they've just bought because as a yoga studio owner, our lifeblood is memberships. 
memberships, getting people who are paying you every single month, recurring each day or month in and month out so that we know we can look ahead and say, oh, this is the guaranteed revenue that I have coming in next month, yeah. which allows us to take the noose of that financial noose of not knowing and like loosen it and be like, okay, I know this is going to come in next month. Now let me figure out how to get more people. It gives you breathing room guys. And so if we can, if we can understand in our businesses, how to get leads, right? How to bring people in, uh, into our orbit, literally into our orbit, like whether it's online through email and, or if it's on Facebook and I'm just putting out great content and people are engaging with it. And then I'm nurturing those people through uh, direct email or with uh, more online information, retargeting through Facebook. Facebook does some amazing stuff as far as marketing goes. Um, and then I'm able to convert them into uh, that initial intro package. Then I can, then the work begins. Uh, the next, the next podcast, we're going to talk about delivery and we'll talk about the uh, uh, resale, upsell and uh, retention. Uh, the last two parts of the, uh, of the uh, five core functions of a business. Uh, but I hope this was helpful and you got a bunch of uh, uh, gold nuggets out of it. So a little recap. Don't do general marketing, do direct response marketing. Yes. Get And right now, Facebook is where it's at. Like you go in there, put some ads out, put some content in there and then have one call to action, have them link them and don't link them to your website, link them to a page that has just the information that you talk to them about with one thing to do on that page. One thing to do, whether it's give your email or actually sign up for the intro package. And then what's beautiful about Facebook too, that's our main source of marketing right now is you can then nurture them, even if you don't give them email. Someone can actually watch a video and you can take the people who have watched a certain percentage of that video and send them more information because if they watch more of the video, the likelihood that they're interested and they have like a, their higher prospect to actually come in and join your yoga studio is has increased. And so you can retarget them. Now, Facebook owns all of that information. And so it's powerful, but always know that getting their information, an email, a phone number or something is the high watermark in direct response marketing because then you can now reach out and follow up with them on your own without having to depend on Facebook's algorithm. Yeah. Chris, like a leprechaun, he just wants to throw more gold nuggets all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so join us for the next episode because it's going to be awesome. We're going to wrap this, the five core functions of a business and talk about the, uh, talk about delivery, talk about uh, retention and uh, resell and upsell. And uh, hope this uh, helps. And if you haven't yet, please rate, review, and subscribe yes. to this podcast. It means the world to us. Yes. Uh, it's, you know, right now just a, a passion project for us to take what we've learned and really just deliver it. And hopefully you find value in it and it helps you in your business. Yeah. Help you in your studios, help you in your business and, uh, and help you, uh, help you find some financial freedom. Uh, so remember everybody, thanks for listening. Do the work, honor the struggle, make the world a better place. We'll talk soon. Peace. Peace. Yes. Thanks so much for listening to Yoga Entrepreneur Secrets. Do you have a question that you'd like us to answer raw and uncut on the podcast? If you want your questions answered, all you need to do is head over to Apple Podcasts and do three simple things. One, rate and review telling us what you think of the podcast. Two, in that review, ask anything you want related to yoga. And three, if you want a shout out, leave your Instagram handle or name. And that's it. Then listen in to hear your question answered live, raw and uncut. Join us next time on Yoga Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast.